What is up, everybody? So yesterday, Friday, July 21st, uh, EA released three new blog posts about the gameplay of Madden 18. So I just kind of wanted to talk about them and hopefully have some type of discussion with you guys on how you guys think uh, it'll change Madden 18 and how the game is played. So I just want to go over them real quick. So the first one, Madden Mechanics Target Passing. So basically, from what I can tell, uh, you choose a receiver pre-snap. So it says the control scheme is intuitive, providing a straightforward way for users to place the ball in most advantageous place. The better players are at utilizing the target passing mechanic, the more efficient and tactical they will be at becoming picking apart coverages. That they will become at picking apart coverage. So basically, using target pass mechanic right here, you select your primary receiver pre-snap. And then after the snap, you hold left trigger or L2 uh, so that your target comes up and then use the left analog stick to move the target so you basically choose someone pre-snap hold left trigger slash l2 and then you can alter where you want to basically deliver the ball on their route and then you're able to throw it and you can change your targeted receiver during the play see right here while holding l2 slash l lt uh, press the button of the receiver other than the receiver that is currently targeted and the target will switch that receiver so you can switch it around it, it sounds a lot similar to almost like the passing cone from like several years back but not quite the same my thing is i mean i know this seems like a skill um gap type of mechanic where you know the the best of the best are going to be able to use this very effectively and I think there will be a place for this 100%, but it does seem somewhat time consuming. And the fact that you have to move the left stick to move your target makes me wonder if you can't move while using this. Now, if you can't move your quarterback in the pocket while using this mechanic, I think it's going to take a huge hit in value because every year, I mean, Madden's defense is basically predicated on you know heavy blitzes um i know this year they introduced the id the mic so they're trying to slow that down but i mean blitzes find a way every single year so something comes through that basically i mean they've done almost everything they can do nano detection id the mic but someone's going to find something that gets heavy consistent pressure and i just don't think you can have a super immobile qb just standing in the pocket like a sitting duck uh, trying to target pass to somebody downfield so obviously this is all like first analysis first thoughts and the only way we'll actually know is when the game comes out and we can actually test it ourselves and see what's effective and what's not but just first thought I think this will be very good in kind of a coverage heavy meta but not that great against a heavy blitz meta now I could be totally off um also another thing that I was thinking so since this uses the left trigger um, they have the note down here now that target passing is on LT slash L2 low pass controls have changed you now hold LB or L1 to activate the high low modifier and then depending on if your left analog sticks up or down uh, that's what dictates a higher or low pass but now I'm wondering if they got rid of playmaker like completely because before left trigger and L2 uh, during the play uh, was playmaker you'd hold it and then flick the right analog stick and it would you know move your closest receiver to the direction you flick the analog stick so they didn't mention anything about that but i'm wondering every single year for the past like two or three years playmaker has been super super op and so i'm wondering if they finally just took it out of the game uh, because they couldn't find a way to basically not make it overpowered so we'll see uh, what happens with that so that's a very interesting mechanic uh, the next one wide receiver db interactions so this is mainly for mutt squads um so uh, basically they go over all the different press mechanics highlight coverages uh auto chucks so you can um get auto chucked by a, a defensive back even if it, it's not uh user controlled you have wide receiver a different wide receiver release mechanic so just go release um, conservative change up release foot fire releases and then standard releases so they all have their their pros and cons and just go is basically you just want to go deep and uh, you know just try and basically outrun your defender from what I can understand uh, conservative change up release seems to be good uh, the best option against getting pressed an aggressive foot fire release uh, is basically you kind of want to 
try and predict the opposite side of where you're going to get pressed from and uh you know try and get an, a super aggressive release on that side and then standard release from what i understand is the slowest but is basically the most controlled so um right here they have a little chart as you can see a lot of these mechanics result in wide receiver losses um basically if you go for if you're getting pressed and the db can press you basically just a normal press they can press you right <clears throat> or press you left so they can try and push you inside or outside and so uh, you have standard straight standard right standard left you're going to lose that that press battle every time as a receiver if you try to go just go you're going to lose change ups um so you can change up straight uh, if they're just pressing you straight down you'll win otherwise you'll lose now i think the best option here against press is change up right and change up left as you see you have two scenarios with a change up right and change up left where you actually win against the db press um the only time you lose is if you happen to change up in the same direction that they're pressing you and then you know foot fires a uh, foot fire straight you lose every single time against the press but as you can see if you foot fire in the opposite direction of the way you're they, they want to press you it's a super win for you so it's kind of a very high risk high reward that's a 33 percent chance of you you know picking the right direction and basically just leaving your defender in, in the dust immediately so high risk high reward it's definitely going to be highly predicated on a, you know noticing your opponent's tendencies and it's, it's going to be a huge mind game so i think that'll be a really cool when it comes to mutt squads so uh, cutting out of the press so you can still um beat the press it, it comes down to your beat press plus strength ratings versus uh, your opponent's beat press and strength ratings but then uh you can cut out of your route you have to hold rb or r1 uh, to lock in your current moving direction and then you can flick the right stick in one of eight directions to make a sharp cut so you'll you'll basically be able to run you know authentic like sharp routes like corner routes c routes you know deep post routes stuff like that without you know in years past when when you locked onto a receiver you were, you were just running routes with the left stick there was no you know planning your feet there was no you know different press mechanics it was all just you know run with the left stick and freestyle try to get open so now we made it a lot deeper now that they introduced mutt squads and you know one person's going to be playing a wide receiver position in mutt squads could be two if you have a running back flexed out so um they really overhauled that so i think this will be really interesting and if you want to play mutt squads th these kind of outcomes are probably must you know knows in terms of you have to have knowledge of these outcomes to be able to compete at a decent level in mutt squads so for the third one uh, you have the game style so i'm sure everybody's heard of this uh basically you have simulation competitive and arcade so it goes over it right here arcade high octane basically a lot of crazy stuff happens a lot of fumbles a lot of insane catches just very very high power and a lot of fun a uh, simulation basically uh, a lot of randomness penalties stuff like that injuries um, just as you see right here random outcomes so even the best players are still gonna you know drop wide open passes and whatnot randomly uh, not super often obviously but it is a part of the randomness and then competitive all about head-to-head -head competition tournament play so basically the opposite opposite of simulation so your best players aren't gonna drop wide open passes um, not gonna be as many like crazy fumbles no injuries very limited penalties P penalties will probably only be you know enforced against user players um one-on-one -on -one catches you know really really low catch rate for the offense in one-on-one -on -one catch situations uh, so they, they made a point to point that out so i'm guessing aggressive catch is still going to be a uh, pretty underpowered when it comes to just lobbing up one-on-ones unless you have an insane uh, you know overall advantage over the defender but right here they go into uh, some bullet points for the breakdown so arcade user controlled pass rushers frequently beat their blocks user hit sticks and strip ball attempts highly successful spec catches occur frequently broken tackles are commonplace chance of throwing picks as a user is lower and you can kick longer field goals and higher chance to block kicks so as you can see just everything just kind of ramped up a lot of broken tackles and spec catches a lot of big hits basically the things people tune in uh, to see on sunday the highlight plays you're going to see a lot of them in arcade so simulation 
expect the unexpected. Even highly rated players have slim chance of failure. So that's what I was talking about when I said, you know, highly rated players randomly dropping wide open passes. Injuries and penalties occur at a rate on par with real world NFL statistics and data. So you're going to break off that 80 yard touchdown run and get hit with the holding penalty or hit with the clipping penalty and stuff like that. It's a lot of randomness when it comes to injuries or and penalties. Uh, players with elite ratings will be successful far more often than those with ratings below the elite level. So uh, that sentence right there is kind of redundant. I would hope that's the case. Players with elite ratings are more successful than those with ratings below the elite level. So I would hope elite players are more successful than non-elite players. But um, yeah, so they included that um, new pass and accuracy system allows more realistic performances from lower rated quarterbacks so uh, basically uh, lower QBs are gonna be throwing the ball you know 50 yards into the stands um, fatigue and stamina have bigger impacts on gameplay so uh, that's for simulation um, competitive now this is what all online modes are gonna be set at all tournaments are gonna be played at this um, so uh, if you, you know you're planning on you know trying to qualify or if you just play online a lot uh, this is definitely the mode you're going to want to know about so going for an interception with a wide open defensive player who has a good catch rating leads to a significantly lower chance of them dropping it so uh, basically much fewer dropped interceptions so people don't get bailed out as often um, for making bad reads throwing from a clean pocket with the QB's feet set reduces the chance of an inaccurate pass so basically if you have you know Aaron Rodgers chilling in the pocket he's not gonna randomly sail a ball 10 yards over his receivers head uh, there's a significantly lower chance of a drop catch when a receiver is considered wide open and has a good catch rating so this is literally the opposite of what they said up here in the simulation where you know even high rated receivers will have chances of basically dropping wide open passes this is you know significantly lower chance I think they mentioned that there's a threshold catch rating where they literally will never drop a wide open pass a decreased chance of offensive wins and multiplayer catch outcomes such as throwing to recovered receivers so this addresses you know one-on-one -on -one, just lobbing it up in one-on-one -on -one situations and getting bailed out with the aggressive catch and then only AI players with the big hitter trait can hit stick so I think uh, this is actually a very important bullet point here uh, you're gonna see in you know stuff like salary cap and even mutt Players with the big hitter trait are going to become a lot more valued. Not that they weren't already valued, uh, but you know you could click on and uh, you know still get random hit sticks from guys who who weren't even big hitters, um, and and get the AI uh, to make those hits over the middle. But now that it's only with big hitter trait uh, players can lay the wood, um, I think you're definitely going to see an uptick in the value of anybody released who, who has you know a big hitter trait so that pretty much covers it uh right here game styles not only lets players decide their gameplay experience they also get the mad devs the ability to tailor the game to specific communities via tuner updates so uh, that's something that's also pretty important i think uh, so you're going to see more patches more than likely as the year goes on this year like you saw this past year you know this past year when the game came out i think it was hp stretches and hp counters were like super op they patched them and down the stretch I think uh, stretches were decent but counters pretty much got nerfed into the ground and then they came out with a couple more uh, tuning updates uh, one tried to stop nickel blitz and I think actually it kind of made it a little worse but um, you know they'll do their best to kind of patch stuff that's broken in OP but uh, that's what you can expect this year in Madden 18. Uh, those were the three blogs that came out yesterday, July 21st, and I'm sure there will be more as uh, you know the the days approach. And Madden 18's launch is in you know about uh, today's July 22nd. It comes out August 22nd if you pre-ordered it. So they're definitely going to keep dropping content and information as that date gets closer but i hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you guys think of these three new gameplay blogs and what you guys think of all the new gameplay mechanics i'd be interested in hearing your opinion and until next time guys take it easy